Hello everyone, welcome back to Blockman Editor Tutorial. In these videos, we will give you a complete introduction to the Blockman Editor. We often manipulate various characters to play in games. So how to create these characters in the editor? It's time to introduce Entity from the game components. Let's first look at how to create an entity. Enter the editor, click the entity component in the game component. You can see that there is already an entity in the entity list, this entity is the player we manipulate in game. If you want to create a non-player entity, you can click the new button, enter the name in the new entity template, and then click confirm button, and a new entity is successfully created. After the creation is complete, we can find the properties of this entity in the property view on the right side of the editor. First, check out the basic properties of the entity. To begin, we need to determine the entity profile photo and actor model. The entity profile photo should be an image in PNG format. According to the editor's regulations, the pixel of the image must be a multiple of 32. As for the properties of actor model, Player entities and non-player entities are somewhat different. Player entities have a actor type property, which includes two options, Blockman Go Actor and Custom Actor. Blockman Go Actor refers to the character set by the player on the Blockman Go game platform. If the actor model is selected to be this option, then the actor model, when entering the game will be based on the character and costume set by the user in Blockman Go platform. The custom character allows us to choose the character model in the editor. The setting of this option is consistent with the character model properties of non-player entities. We can determine the actor model by clicking the resource selection button, or find the specific actor file in the asset management view, and add the actor model by dragging and dropping the actor file. Most of the entity's creature attributes are some fundamental settings, you can have a try yourself. Here we mainly focus on the two attributes of behavior on death and entity view height. The behavior on death attribute is divided into two parts, death action and death sound. The death action attribute requires us to enter the exact action name and determine the duration. The death action needs to be added in the actor editor. Regarding the addition of actions, we will explain in detail in the subsequent courses, and let's keep it short here. In death sound effect property, we can set whether the sound effect can only be audible to self only, whether it is played in loop, and the volume. Note that the death sound requires an audio file in mp3 format. Regarding the attribute, entity view height, its value range is between 1 and 2. When we set the entity view height to the minimum value of 1, what we see will be close to the ground. When we set the entity view height to the maximum value of 2, what we see is relatively far from the ground. Let's take a look at the click to set property, there is an entity clickable checkbox. When we check this option, this entity can be clicked by other entities. Meanwhile, other players will not be able to use normal attacks to damage this entity. However, it should be noted that this option only affects normal attacks. If other entities use skills, they will still cause damage to this entity. Regarding the setting of the HP bar and name property, what we need to pay attention to is that the property name position. The value of this attribute can not only affect the display height of the entity's name, but also affect the height of the entity's health bar. You can adjust it yourself and check the effect. In the entity's battle property view, we can set the attributes that some entities may use in combat. For example, if we check the attribute the entity cannot be attacked, then the entity will not be damaged by the attack from other entities. But it will still take some other damage. For example, let's add a flame part, and edit the logic of collision damage entities. Entities that have checked the entity, cannot be attacked, will still take damage after touching the flame part. And if we check the attribute, the entity cannot be damaged, then the entity will be in an invincible state, and will not take damage from any party. As for the attribute of attack immunity time, it will only take effect after the entity is damaged. For example, we set the immunity time to 3 seconds. When the entity is damaged, it will stay invincible for 3 seconds. During the 3 seconds, 
the entity will no longer take damage from any party. For the attribute of entity damage, the value we set will be used to calculate the skill damage of the current entity. If we want an entity to have a default skill, when it enters the game, it can be achieved through the entity skills attribute. Click the add button on the right side of the entity skill to add a skill bar. Then, we can click the skill bar to select the corresponding skills. If you want an entity to have multiple skills, you can click the add button multiple times to add multiple skill bars for configuration. If you want the player to be able to wear gear in game, you need to use the gear slot attribute. Click the add button on the right side of the entity's gear slot to add an empty gear slot. We can click the gear slot selection button to determine the number of the gear slot. There are up to 4 gear slots on an entity that can be used, numbered from 1 to 4, corresponding to helmets, clothes, pants, and shoes. The gear slot property needs to be used in conjunction with props, and this attribute only takes effect on player entities. Items can only be equipped to the player, after the gear slot, has been successfully added to the entity's gear slot attribute. In the entity's movement property view, we mainly focus on, the entity feet lifting height property in the movement property. Entity feet lifting height means that, when the entity moves and encounters an obstacle, if the entity foot lift height value we set, is not less than the height of the obstacle, we can directly cross the obstacle, otherwise we need to jump over the obstacle. Then let's look at the leap property of the entity, we can control whether the entity can jump, by checking the entity leaping attribute. If we want to make the entity jump higher, we need to set it through the entity leaping speed property. The higher we set the value of takeoff speed, the higher the entity can jump. Regarding the automatic jump height it means that, when the entity moves and encounters an obstacle. If the height of the obstacle is greater than the entity feet lifting height, and less than, or equal to the automatic jump height, the entity will automatically try to jump over the obstacle. But whether the jump, can be successful or not is determined by the entity jump height set, by the entity leaping speed attribute. You can try to set it. The lock the bodice orientation, attribute, is used to automatically turn player entities around, and only applies to player entities. When we check this property, if the entity's head and body are facing different directions, the entity's body will automatically turn to the direction, that the entity's head is facing towards. And if this property is not checked, only when the entity's head rotates beyond a certain angle, will the entity's body follow the head to rotate in the same direction? Regarding the two attributes of landing damage threshold value and landing damage scale, both are related to the damage entity takes after falling from the air. The landing damage threshold value means that when an entity falls from a height, the landing speed will become faster and faster due to the influence of gravity and height. When the landing speed exceeds the threshold range, the entity will take landing damage. The landing damage scale means that when the landing speed exceeds the landing damage threshold, the player will receive a certain amount of damage according to a preset set ratio. In the entity's physical attribute view, let's first look at the properties related to the collision volume. If we want the entity to have actual collision effect with other entities, such as an NPC, we need to check the Enable Collision Effect property. If this property is not checked, the collision between entities will have the effect of passing through the mold. For example, we place an NPC entity in the scene. When Enable Collision Effects is checked, it can be clearly seen that the player entity is blocked when it hits the NPC entity. Without checking this attribute, the player entity passes through the NPC entity. Next, let's look at the property, Entity Collision Volume. There are four types of collision volumes for entities, namely, cuboid, sphere, capsule, and cylinder. Each of the four types of collision volumes has its own unique settings. For example, a cuboid type requires us to set the three values of the length, width and height of the collision volume. The sphere only needs us to set the value of the collision radius. Capsules and cylinders require us to set both the collision height and radius. If we check the trigger collision event property, when the entity collides with the part, the collision event will be triggered. If it is not checked, 
it will not be triggered. Finally, let's take a look at the entity gravity property and the fall under gravity property. The entity gravity property is used to set the gravity the entity experiences in game. If we set the gravity of the entity to zero, then the entity will float. If we set the gravity of the entity to be greater than zero, then the entity will fall due to the influence of gravity. The fall under gravity is effective for non-player entities, and player entities will not be controlled by this property. When we check this property, non-player entities that we place in air in the scene will fall. If this is not checked, non-player entities placed in air will remain floating. That's all for this video. We hope it can help you on your way to a great creator. If you want to know more about the editor, you can comment below the video or post on the official forum. See you in the next video.